Hello, people on the YouTube. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I don't even know how to introduce this. So, uh, I was in the process of trying to sell some things. And uh, my buddy Frank um, is, is working for Reverb. And he said, hey, well, don't, don't use the other bay. Uh, use Reverb. Um, and I think that's a good idea. So, I went through the Reverb web website for quite a while just to find out how people... Um, you know, show their stuff and, and how it's labeled and what the categories are and all that. If you don't know, a reverb is kind of like the bay thing, but you don't, there are no auctions. And it's just firm pricing. Um, they have a great support team. So it's not like, you know, buying privately. It's like there's a company in between that kind of monitors things and makes sure disputes are handled correctly. And it's all for musical instruments. And they're very big in the US. They're gigantic in the US. And now they're actually moving into Europe. Um, my buddy told me all that stuff. Not that I care, but whatever. That's apparently what they're doing. Um, so it would be a good idea. Uh, he he explained to me uh, if I sold my stuff there because they could, you know, because I have a channel, they can help me out. They can publicize my shop, and I, that's a good idea. So in um, me going through the website, I found a cool piece of gear, um, and that kind of sparked me doing a clone project. A cloning, stop that. Uh, cloning what Ola England did. Ola actually uh, went on Reverb and he bought one of the first multi effects that he had and kind of checked it and revisited it. And because I found this piece of gear, I was like, you know what? That's cool. That's a cool thing. It's not new, it's something that he did, but I'm going to steal that from him. Sorry, Ola. Um, he, we know Ola's great. Come on, I don't think he's going to beat me up. I hope he's not going to beat me up. He's tall. He could. So, here's what I found. Here's what I found. So, if you look at the screen, um, I owned a Digitech GSP 2101. That's a 12, but I owned a 2101. Um, broke it. Used it for years while at Berkeley. I, um, I used it here in bands and that was like the axe effects of its day. I used that while at Berkeley. The clean sounds were amazing and for me, well, the drive sounds were back then SDI. They were, you know, cool. I actually had that with the Rocktron Velocity uh, transistor one rack unit power amp and two Rocktron Velocity um, 112s, which were kind of wedges. So that was like even my life system, my stereo system. And, and I loved it back in the day. The cleans were in, insane. So uh, I did a lot of work with this thing. And then while I was in California, it broke because you're not supposed to feed um, phantom power to the XLR outputs, which I accidentally did. And uh, I did buy another GSP 2101 artist, which is still in my rack down there. And I broke that one as well because me stupid. So my um, blue one is upstairs. My silver chrome artist is still in the rack because it looks pretty, but both of them are non-functioning. Now, this is a 97-21-12, which is the, uh, not predecessor, the, the follow-up, the, the next step up. It came after that one. It had a little bit more control and, um, so it's relatively inexpensive. And I think what we could do is I buy the damn thing. Show it again, Leslie. The, the board alone, the control board, cost me 600 marks, which by now, in today's standards, would be 600 euro. The unit cost me 3,000. So um, this is all in one for 285 and 9 euro shipping or 849. So... I think we should buy this. We should look at these 20 year old sounds, see what I think about them, and then maybe do a giveaway for someone who, you know, needs them. Or maybe I keep it. Maybe it's cool. I mean, for me, this is history. This is when I was 18, 19 years old. Um, and I actually purchased it with uh, money I inherited from my grandfather who passed away. So my blue Digitech GSP 2101 artist, limited edition, um, actually meant quite a bit to me. It was a lot of money back then. So I'm going to say we buy this. So if I click on add to cart, oh, I can pay with PayPal. I have PayPal. Okay. Sold by this guy in Germany. View card, proceed to checkout. That, is it that easy? I need, to, I need an account. Apparently, I don't need an account. 
already have a reverb account, log in to save time. Um, well, how about we don't do it with an account? I mean, then, well, I don't know. I need an account anyway. Let's see. Email, log in with Facebook, sign up. Here we go. First name, I have that. Last name, they gave me one of those. Email, yes. I'm going to blur that shit out, otherwise you've sent me penis pictures. Password, well, we're going to most certainly blur that out. <laughs> um, we're going to do that. Blah, 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 sign up. And, and that's apparently it. Okay, signing up for Reverb, easy. Um, name, shipping address, of course. Henning, I have that. Oh, oh, don't, don't hit. And Reverb just sent me an email saying, confirm your email. I can do that. I can totally confirm my email by clicking confirm my email. And now my email is confirmed. Now I am officially on Reverb. Welcome to Reverb. Well, welcome you to Reverb. It's nice to meet you. Uh, uh, Leslie, go to the back far camera. Because, you know, now people can't read. It's 4K, who knows? And you're saying Vic needs to be separated, right? Mm -hmm. That's what Leslie always says. City, I have that. I live in a city. State, region. Oh, okay. Phone number. Ah, oh, they're going to call me and just breathe heavily. They're going to do that. Are you going to breathe heavily, reverb people? Like, hello, Henning. <sighs> That's why they need my phone number. Uh, save address. Check out with PayPal. I mean, that's damn easy. Oh, I have to log. Why doesn't it log me in automatically? Yeah, don't don't show my PayPal login because you know we don't want that. We don't what. Uh, I mean, come on. Place order. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, send there. Yes. 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 That's pretty much as easy as buying something at Tormon or anyone else. I have an order number. I can contact the seller. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I guess I guess that's it. I just bought something on Reverb. Now, um, we're going to cut... And hopefully see that it has arrived. And then plug it in and check it out. Yes, in this video. Now. So far, this all pretty much worked out. Made an account. Hit buy. Was a pretty cool price. And um, then uh, Dietmar... Uh, brought Dietmar's our, you know, postman. Uh, brought it. Uh, there was a weekend in between, so I had to wait from I think Thursday, Friday to Monday. But that was as fast as possibly could be. Of course, that depends on who you're buying it from, not Reverb. You know, they're not the people shipping it. And um, it is here. As far as I can tell, it doesn't have the footboard with it. Which did I not understand that? I mean, I don't care whether the footboard's in it or not. Just it looked like it was. But based on the box, it's not. So whatever. I'm not going to use my mega super duper unboxing tool that I got from a fan in the US because uh, this box is crazy. Um, with the, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, let's see, show the far cam, come on. Oh, you are on the far, what? You know, brilliant people think alike. I also have the footboard, which actually was in my mom's basement and in another basement where it was really damp and whatever for years would be interesting to know if it actually still worked which I highly doubt which I highly doubt but I have the footboard no oh, the footboard is in here <laughs> he put it diagonally uh, actually let me let me do something I'll be right back I'm gonna get my 1990 for 2101. Be right back. <sighs> I am not in shape. So, 
<laughs> oh my god. This uh, has a lot of... There's spiders in it. <laughs> so here's my original 2101. This thing toured the world with me. It went to Boston, did great job for three years. It went to LA with me. I used the shit out of this and then it broke because I fed it too much phantom power or phantom power at all. And that's why I bought the silver one that's still in the rack down there, which also doesn't work because I think I did the same stupid mistake. So let's find out what's in the box. Yes, here's the Control One footboard, which looks pristine. And that by itself, back in the day, was 600 bucks. And I forked that over. I spent a lot of money on this gear back in the day. Funny thing is, had I bought like a Marshall JCM or something, it would still be worth pretty much exactly what I paid or more. So investing in analog gear is actually a little bit of a better idea because nowadays digital stuff not worth so much. Yeah, got a little bit of a scratch, but come on, if this was used live, has a couple of scra scratches, but it's solid. Yeah, it's missing like a little bit of the rubber here, but apart from that, this is totally fine. You could like, you know, see your presets and all this stuff here. This was pretty advanced for, right well, here, right here. It was pretty advanced for its day. Also, um, it took power from the cable. So that was like a kind of a MIDI cable with extra power. And he included the special MIDI cable for the foot switch. And of course a power, this is pretty cool. Everything I need is here. For under 300 bucks, uh, uh, wait, wait. For under 300 bucks, reverb, yay. Uh, something like this, I guess so. Now come on, this is pretty damn cool. He includes the manual. That, that, is, that, that, that is nice. If you're wondering what, what that is, right, right over there, that, that thing, you can't focus on that. That's Django. Don't ask about Django. We'll get to Django. And I can't tell you why. There's no actual reasoning for it. But for some reason, I had a better feeling buying this on Reverb than on eBay. And I don't... I don't I, I, there's absolutely no reason why that should be. Just... I'm just saying. I, I don't know why it would feel better because, you know, it's, it's coming from a private person so it's just as much risk just felt like it it just felt like it he put it in a trash bag and holy crap looks like the display could be slightly dinged in there but probably always has been it looks like these screws had have been opened at some point maybe it has been serviced or the tube has been replaced right there um, and this rack ear is slightly, slightly bent right there. But none of that in any way says it doesn't work and none of that says it's been a bad, uh, bad investment. Ah! Ha ha! Ho! Ha ha! Output FX loop expression. You can't break this with phantom power. Because it doesn't have the XLI inputs. Check this out compared to... See, I think the 2112 was a little bit cheaper. Possibly. But this one had XLI outs. So this one had balanced outs. And it was easy to break it by feeding those the phantom power. So packaging all good. But again, not Reverb's thing. That's a... Whoever sends it. Uh, s sends it. Now, I don't want to scratch up my table with this one screw, so I'm going to get my no table scratchy uppy things. I highly recommend getting these silicone pot holders, not available on Reverb. Um, I use them for uh, guitar maintenance, and if I want to put a pedal on the table that doesn't have rubber feet or something, these are great. You can put the guitar on it, it doesn't slip. Great for many things. You can buy them at Xenos, Germany. Bonk. 
I, I, <clears throat> I, that didn't happen. I didn't just kick it over and break it. Damn it. Hey, hopefully it survived. So I'm gonna set this up now. So audio has been connected. Let's see if something happens. Hey, that works. Let's take a trip back in time, people. Okay, and of course, to celebrate this occasion, I'm going for it with my Ibanez Frank and Bali in ugly orange that I actually hand painted uh, with blue things on it. I might put this up on reverb either in the current state if someone wants it or actually um, this, this will rub off so I could clean it and then you would have a stock Frank and Bali. Doesn't really have a scratch on it as far as I know. No, it has a little bit of a ding here at the bottom. But um, this is a classic guitar. This is the guitar that I played with the GSP 2101 back in the day. So that's what we're doing. Um, input output. I'm getting something here, so we're good. Quite a bit of buzz going on, but I expected the sound to be much crappier. So it's it's clearly DI with a high fizzle, but it doesn't sound in anywhere worse than a, a lot of the modelers even nowadays when you go DI. So that's pretty impressive for 300 bucks, come on. a rockin' sound. <laughs> Clean comp delay, this is where this thing excelled big time. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Cause that's a sound I couldn't get with anything else. I mean, I couldn't get this sound with my amps because it doesn't sound like an amp. Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm distorting a little bit, uh, but these are the sounds that only the Digitech could get. I, this is just brilliant. That's like a doubling sound. That's just crap. And notice, like, none of these sounds so far actually are claiming to be a Marshall, a Vox, or whatever. People back then didn't think like this. They just wanted to create guitar sounds. Well, nowadays it's all about 
It says EVH. Can you see? Okay, go back. Go back. Let me see if I can get the. Here we go. Now you can see it without EVH78. Um, nowadays, it's all about modeling something real instead of just creating something in the box and claiming it's in the box. It's our thing. There we go. There's some serious latency happening in there. Butchering it. We're not holdsworthy. I don't think this is going to be a holdsworthy sound. Oh, they're trying to do a blues sound. Okay, obviously the driven stuff is pretty damn bad. This is the good shit. So there you go, the GSP 2112, uh, it sounds like the 211 sounded, a uh, different interface, blah blah blah, some buttons and you can of course, you know, I don't know, solo, levels, you can assign to everything, there's pitch and there's delay, reverse modulation, you know what? As a dirt box, hell the fuck no, it was good for back then, um, not so good for now, but when it comes to clean sounds, this thing still absolutely rules with tons of compression and delivering exactly those sounds that we crave from the 80s. If you want those Toto sounds and all those 80s rack gear sounds with some delay, some chorus on it, I think this box delivers much quicker and much on the dot than any of pedals into some amps because it's gonna sound like tube but for those sounds this di kind of brightness without speaker simulation or whatever it is um really is way cool so um we're gonna 
put this on Reverb as a giveaway. So if you want to be, uh, partake in the giveaway, please go to Reverb and I don't know how they're gonna do it, but they're gonna do it on Reverb.com. So you have to go there, do whatever you have to do. I don't know, I don't know. And then um, I'm gonna ship it to you, including the foot switch and everything. So if you're in the market for these really amazing clean sounds, this 2112 from Digitech could be yours. Go to Reverb.com, figure out what to do. And I'm out. This was actually really fun to just revisit the good old days when we thought this was all amazing. And you know what? Half of it is truly amazing. Half of it, not so truly. Yours truly here. Have I said Reverb.com enough? I don't know. Anyone? Is anyone keeping count? I don't know. You know, there's a contract. I have to say Reverb.com a certain amount of times, otherwise they're going to come with baseball bats and uh, I'm not going to have a good day. No, you know that's not the case. I'm going to put loads of stuff on Reverb to sell at some point this week. See you guys. Peace out. Animals at the end. <laughs>